At last, Halo Infinite multiplayer. I think it's every viewer's expectation now that every opinion on this game be shill, shill, shill. But I'm going to stop you there. Not everything in the presentation was perfect. I promised last video to really get critical on this. I was disappointed to learn that the maps are, in fact, not infinite. Nor were there an infinite amount of vehicles. Come to think of it, what is infinite? Space? Time? The soul? In this case, it's live service monetization. 343 really want to drive home just how big they want Halo to be, just how long they want it to last. The customization seemed to be infinite. Beyond that, the game seemed to be a watered down Halo 5. That mightn't even be a bad thing. All factors, which I'll get to, considered. I saw a very clear renewed focus on the noob, you know, the new player. Renewed focus is really the word of the bloody year, isn't it? The new players were front and center in the show. Before I get to that, I've been told I'm not energetic enough. So let's do my act man voice. Let's get really involved. What's up guys? It's the shredded nerd here. Halo Infinite looks awesome and bad? People have been talking about how awesome the harpoon gun is, but overall, was it good? Was the multiplayer reveal impressive? Okay, I'm gonna drop this act. Well, let's start with the positives. Yeah, the harpoon gun does look really good. It's like an anti-vehicle weapon, possibly a replacement to the Spartan laser. The Spartan laser was introduced as a remedy to the OP vehicles from Halo 2. But it was an overcorrection, so at least we can say that 343's behavior is in keeping with Halo tradition. The Spartan laser made it a necessity for your team to hold it if you ever wanted to actually use vehicles. I imagine the Spartan laser will still exist, but it will be relegated to the seedier parts of town. The laser will be like that old dude in a trench coat at the back of some sleazy bar saying things like, Hey kid, you wanna try some action sack? The big team battle looks really good. They improved it to 12v12 players. For Halo, that's quite big. The Halo games have much higher than average time to kill, so I imagine more players than 24 would be tough to balance. It would also kill performance considering they are aiming for 120 FPS across the board. The focus on vehicles was easily the best part. They know they messed up when they nerfed the Halo 5 vehicle sandbox, so it's good to see them go back to it and really flesh it out. Vehicles and big team battle are important to Halo. The Doomsday Timer is a bit iffy. From what I know, a similar feature existed in the Halo Reach beta. I imagine it was cut for a good reason. The vehicle damage looks like a really good idea, so long as the vehicles are powerful. If a vehicle is having a really good run, picking up a killing frenzy, it would be bad to end that run just with some silly occurrence like a misplaced grenade. This new system could make it so that you can effectively counter vehicles without having to tune up all weapon damage against vehicles like Halo Reach and Halo 5, and especially Halo 2 Anniversary, which made every vehicle essentially a death trap. The training center looks like a good idea as well. It has shown that they have a focus on new players, which I'll certainly get to in further detail. Aiming for the noob audience has been pretty bad for Halo in the past, like when Halo 4 tried to cater to casual players. I hope they don't compromise game design for that reason. The Academy is still a good idea though. I feel like I've only been further vindicated in my CSGO comparison when they basically have bot training and aim training maps in the game. I think Microsoft is pulling out all stops. They kept on bringing up how this would be the biggest Halo player base ever. At launch, it probably will be. A free to play AAA game with a massive marketing budget? It's a shoe in Will they retain that audience? Who knows? We'll have to see the forge for that. The bots are a great addition. All of these are things we've wanted for years. The only possible complaint I can think of is that they didn't come sooner. That they didn't introduce them in Halo 5. I mean, to be honest, bots could have existed since the very first Halo game. So it is to 343's credit that they were the first to bring it over. The equipment looks fun. And I like that it's equipment, not intrinsic abilities. It's like Halo 3 somewhat, although I think the sandbox effect of the equipment will be quite different. I think people do like to draw parallels in terms of how the system will function and how the general game will play. I've seen some people say it looks like Titanfall. The wider audience is having trouble categorizing what type of game Halo Infinite is. Is it classic Halo? Not really. Is it Halo 5? No. Does it take much from other games like Titanfall, CSGO, Battlefield? 
Yes, but only some things. The gameplay looks quite unlike anything we've seen before. It takes a bit of inspiration from everything. That could either mean a garbled mess of a game, or something truly next-gen. Something new and inventive. The equipment was a massive presence in all their material, and it seems like it will be a massive presence in gameplay. That could be good. It seems as though the equipment actually has an interesting sandbox effect. It's not just like Call of Duty killstreaks or seeing through walls, although one of them was a grenade that allows you to see through walls. Only in a given area though, so it is better. We get traversal options that are limited use and picked up off the map. That means it's not just a chaotic mess. They actually have limits, which makes using those abilities so much more powerful. Who knows if they're even as much of a presence in actual gameplay as they are in this trailer. Halo 3 had equipment, but it didn't work like this. The customization was stellar as well. Like I said in this last video, looks a little derivative, but still overall looking quite impressive. The level of customization was what really appeals to me. The prosthetics. Being able to customize every little detail on your Spartan. The colors looked pretty good, although that is tied to the still controversial armor coding system. That's very concerning to me. We don't entirely know how the system works. What's more concerning is that they could have come out and detailed exactly how the armor coding system works to dispel any rumors and reassure us. That they didn't do so does set off a warning signal for me. Maybe they do have something to hide and the armor coding system really isn't ideal. I think we need to press 343 for further details on how the monetization is going to work. It's better to apply them now, when there's still time to change, than wait until release and find out their in-game purchases are aggressive and greedy. Another minor gripe is that with the seasons continuing, I think the armor will get progressively wackier, kind of ruining the aesthetic, just like what happened in Team Fortress 2. Besides that, the customization looks good. They really wanted to articulate how your Spartan player character is an extension of yourself. Another quick point, again on how unique Halo Infinite is, is that so much of the sandbox is completely brand new. No Promethean weapons. Good riddance, I say. They were either redundant or just plain overpowered. But what they've showed us is such a completely new sandbox. They've replaced the shotgun and the pistol. They extensively showed off the new plasma weapon, the spike launcher, the commando. It seems like there are more new weapons than old weapons. It's better to count what's returning, the AR, the needler, the rocket launcher, the battle rifle, sniper and plasma pistol. This looks like the most drastic sandbox overhaul possibly ever in Halo history. It looks like nothing we've seen before. Now, enough with repeating all the praises you've already heard before. What about the downsides? Clearly, 343 have had some tough decisions to make. Joe looks like he's been in a war zone. He looks like presidents do after their term has finished. I think he's been on cleanup duty. He was the contingency plan, the backup. I can only assume he stepped into a studio in the midst of a fairly tumultuous development. Now, I have plenty of concerns, issues and problems with the game. I've marked down a few red flags. I guess I'll talk about the point I opened with. Halo Infinite is watered down Halo 5. What do I mean by that? It retains many of the advanced mobility gameplay features from Halo 5, such as Sprint, Aim Down Sights, which are called Smart Scope, Slide, and Clamber. It appears as though they've removed the Hover, the Dash, the Spartan Charge, and the Ground Pound. I think that's for the better. I think it shows a good compromise. The Sprint isn't too powerful. It's clearly a lot closer to base movement than Halo 5. 5 was, and doesn't seem to invalidate the vehicle sandbox quite like Halo 5 Sprint did. It doesn't seem like they have to stretch out maps, maps as much either to accommodate Sprint like they did in Halo 5. There is an approximately 1.4 times zoom with a smart scope on the assault rifle. It seems to be uniform, having the same heads up display on the needler and basically any weapon that doesn't have an intrinsic scope. It's still uncertain whether this is universal across every weapon, but I assume it is. This stuff was introduced in the first place due to COD kitties in playtests habitually trying to aim down sight with every weapon. Why can't I look? Or why can't I aim? It's considered standard. The same thing happened with Sprint. Why can't I run? I guess this is such a ubiquitous response that they felt they couldn't remove those features like Sprint. But they compromised. They kept the features, but nerfed them, made them weaker. 
This is an admission, however, that Sprint breaks Halo gameplay. 343 themselves seem to understand the problem with Sprint, considering how much they're showing off hip firing. Advanced mobility limited your mobility. You had to do complex button combos to get places quickly in Halo 5. You had to face forward to clamber, and you had to face forward to do any really complex jumps or movements. It was common in classic Halos, when you were good at the game, to move omnidirectionally while shooting, forwards, backwards, left and right. You could always shoot and throw your grenades no matter what direction you were going. It does seem as though they have shooting while sprinting in Halo Infinite, but again, that's still unsure. It was just this short clip that you can figure it out from. These issues will likely still exist with Sprint in Halo Infinite, just to a lesser extent. This looks like a compromise between classic Halo fans and market research. The issue with compromise is that you can often manage to piss off both the casual crowd and Halo fans, while leaving neither satisfied. Advanced mobility can never be good in Halo, only less bad. It makes it harder for the Forge community as well. Designing for multiple movement speeds makes it tougher to design maps. You have to use convoluted pathing in Halo 5 map design. Check out these other videos of mine if you want a more detailed explainer on Sprint. Hey, what's the deal with Smart Scope? For one, it makes autos more powerful than they otherwise should be. They become more accurate, it reduces weapon diversity, it leads to weapon homogenization. Zoom was once a unique weapon trait, like it was only on the battle rifles and the snipers. Giving auto weapons a small cone of accuracy leads to power creep. If you can just spray out and easily hit a distant enemy with an assault rifle, it harms the game balance. Other weapons need to be made more powerful to compensate for this powerful base weapon, hence power creep. The battle rifles in Halo 5 became lasers with massively increased accuracy and projectile speed. This reduced the role of things like strafing in the sandbox and made it more so that the first person to shoot would win every battle. This projectile speed in Halo 5 necessitated things like dash. Needler tracking and bullet magnetism were turned up to account for movement speed. This made the game more noob friendly and dissuaded people from fighting back, instead promoting just running away. Their fix for this was to make it so shields don't come back while sprinting. This only further reinforced the first to shoot wins sandbox. The Needler tracking is clearly still very high in Halo Infinite. The projectile speed is clearly very quick. These issues still exist. I will note that it does look like aim assist is tuned down in the trailers shown. Many shots are being missed that were close to the players, and the reticle doesn't stop that much when hovering over other players' bodies. This is good for the skill aspect of the game. Still, weapons should be inaccurate. They should have spread and inaccuracy like the Halo 3 battle rifle, although maybe with better hit detection and fewer bloodshots. All these changes show that 343 understands the issues with these systems and are simply compromising. Does this mean the game will be unplayable? Of course not. Halo 5 was good fun. This looks even better than Halo 5, but it will have these issues that I'm calling out right now. Now, the focus on bringing in new players seems great at a surface level, but it could certainly present some issues. Halo 4 was designed blatantly to bring in the casual audience and Call of Duty players. It backfired spectacularly. Anyone could get a powerful weapon dropped right in front of them after waiting long enough. You just needed enough points, and you could get points from doing virtually anything. This is why some red flags were set off when we heard the ordinance dropped part in the big team battle trailer. Now we should be very concerned about just how much 343 has changed the game to appeal to the noobs, who really deserve to be lasered. Obviously, they've brought back clamber, slide, sprint, and aim down sight for the casual players, the people in the market research, albeit they are less prominent this time. What else have they changed? Hopefully, not too much. If they massively warp the sandbox for a broad casual audience, it shows that the people in charge of Halo have no faith in how Halo actually plays. A really important point of contention that I don't see enough people bring up is the free-to-play nature of the multiplayer. On the one hand, awesome. I think it will almost definitely have the largest population of any Halo game on launch. 
free to play on Xbox and PC? It's obvious, the Battle Pass system looked really good, completely absent of any FOMO. You can access every past season at any point in the future of the game. What could go wrong? Well, on the one hand, we have no clue how bad the monetization will be. As I said earlier, the armor coding system was concerning. We need to get 343 to tell us how it really works. Spell out the fine details. There's also the big issue that every other free-to-play game struggles with. Hackers and Smurfs. Hackers are pindic bottom feeders. They care so much about the clout of being good at a game, but don't even enjoy the actual gameplay itself. And they ruin it for everybody else. Remember when hackers killed Fall Guys? Yes, that game that was popular for a single month before Amogus came out and ejected Fall Guys from the airlock? People were cheating in that baby game. So you can bet your top dollar people will try to cheat in Halo Infinite. 343 has never had experience with a free-to-play game on this scale. Free-to-play means people can easily create a new account after being banned. If hundreds of thousands are rushing in to play this game the day it came out, cheating is almost a certainty. It happened with CSGO. It happened with Destiny. We need to hear about 343's anti-cheat system. CSGO has complex systems like Overwatch Prime, which is premium matchmaking, and reaching a certain level before being able to access competitive games. Even with all those measures, the game is still riddled with cheaters. I hope that 343 knows what they're doing. Besides cheaters, smurfs will be an issue. High skill veteran players deliberately lowering their rank so they can pub stomp for the epic MLG montage or to boost their friend's rank. To be fair, Halo 3 had this problem, with D-Rankers as they were called. I'd like to see how they plan to remedy this. Maybe look out for a pattern of behavior where players consistently get 0 kills and 15 deaths to all of a sudden going 40-0 when they're playing with somebody on their friends list. What else? In-game characters won't be red or blue anymore. Instead, they have an outline. This will present the issue of screen clutter. They have hit markers, callouts for weapon drops, plus these little heads-up display details. I fear it might make the screen look too busy and become like one of those meme images from a few years back. Or like Battleborn. To cap off, will these be a return to form? I don't know. Free-to-play AAA game launching on Xbox and PC. Content rich from day one with full customization and progress. Looking pretty good to me. But how much hype is it attracting? The truth is, they need people in the broader zeitgeist to be talking about the game. And people are. I've seen plenty of casual gamers who are not otherwise super interested in Halo discussing the game. But it's not the biggest game, by far. What this means is that 343 has some marketing work to do to make sure this game doesn't come out like a wet fart and die. Battlefield is bigger, even though the trailer looks just like stuff we've seen in every previous Battlefield entry. I mean, it's literally like they looked up Battlefield funny and epic moments on YouTube and just turned that into a trailer. Breath of the Wild 2 has massive hype even though they didn't really show much. The new Forza Horizon is more hyped, and to be fair, it looked really good. Very similar to the previous Forza Horizon games, but it's not like they need to change that much. In fact, all of these games look really good. My point is simply that Halo has stiff competition, and it isn't at the top of the pile anymore. It's fallen out of the public conscience. 343 needs to claw their way back. It's an uphill battle for them. What do you think? I tried to really pinpoint any major points in the game that I found questionable. The last video I did received a small amount of negative attention. I see him for being too critical. If they thought that last video was damning, I can't help but think how they'd react to this one. Don't take it personally. You are not Halo Infinite. You are the wonderful individual watching this video. Criticism doesn't ruin a game. It only makes games better. Just imagine if we didn't criticize the Craig demo for Halo Infinite last year. How would the game have turned out now? It would have come out half-baked and terrible. Chad test. Do you want to know if you're a Chad? An alpha male? Look below the video. If you see the words subscribed and the bell next to it is dark like this, you are a certified alpha male Chad. If not, consider joining the nerd army. That's all from me for now. Thank you all so much and goodbye. Are we rushing in, or are we going sneaky-beaky-like?